Case, thanks so much for sitting down with me. We are here all the way in Hangzhou, beautiful Hangzhou, China. Um, if I'm well informed, you have been in variety testing for 44 years. What, what made it so interesting to stay in this part of the sector? Well, it is a, a, I, in the beginning I didn't know, of course. I was rather green when I started this work. I was very young, uh, but it, it soon grew on me. What is so nice about this type of work is that you work with people, you work with nature, and also you work um, for something that has an influence, a great influence on society. Food supply in the world is an important element. And I've always felt that uh, in my position and also my whole organization had an important contribution to that. So that made it very good. Yeah, I can imagine. So uh, looking back at these 44 years, is that at all possible? Such a long time. But anyway, uh, what did you like most about your job? What I liked most, I think, is the variation, uh, the constant swift between um, the, the different aspects of my work. The plants, and the trials, the management side, do I have enough trial fields, do I have enough class houses, uh, and, and the people. And people generally, uh, at, the, at the end of my career, I had an, a, a staff of about 60 people, which means that you, you, have, you know a lot of people. And to have them function as a team, that has been a challenge and is also very good. And of course, we have to realize this whole 44 years, I worked in a sector that in that same period uh, grew, uh, almost exploded from, well, a rather small company when I started work till the big multinationals that we have now uh, in a seat industry that really uh, only grew for 40 years. So you, you had a team around you and you had a very good growth. So obviously you had a, a good team uh, helping you. What, what are the key elements of a good team? Yes, I think to have a good team, uh, that is that is really the basis for your own success. Because you cannot do it alone, you need good people around you. And what are good people? What is a good team? Uh, that's a group of people who uh, have a big variation in people. Uh, so you have different elements in the work. People can specialize in different directions. But also people have to be prepared to step in for each other. If one is on holiday or gets sick, somebody else should be able to do his work. So the size of the team was also very important. If you have a very small team, it is very difficult to replace each other. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a big team and also the, the, the age frequency is important. You need young people to keep things moving yeah. and you need older people who bring in uh, the expertise. Yeah. A good variation That's is uh, genetic, genetic diversity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uniformity is in this in this aspect is not good. That's not good. Yeah. Um, when you look back at at all those years, what do you what would you say are the the greatest achievements of your work of uh, of of your employer Naktimbo? Yeah, Naktimbo is a very peculiar organization worldwide. Uh, it's an inspection service that supervises what the companies are doing, uh, but at the same time, it is governed by those companies which is a unique situation that we know in the Netherlands. And I think the biggest achievement of Naktimo is that they managed um, to follow the development in the industry they worked for and kept their position as, at the one side as uh, the neutral inspector to look after the quality of the seats that were brought on the market, uh, but also were able to help the industry to go forward by developing laboratory method, uh, resistant tests, etc. Uh, you mentioned in the beginning that you're officially retired, but uh, I understand you're not stopping yet. What, what's in the pipeline? Yes, it is the retirement came a little bit as a shock. Uh, from one moment to the other, you, you, you stop uh, interacting with, with, with all kinds of different elements in society. Uh, but fortunately now I am beginning to see some light at the end of that dark tunnel. Um, I have two uh, important things. Uh, as you may know, in Europe, we have started a new project, INVITE, mm -hmm. which is a project to improve the system of uh, variety testing, uh, funded by the European Union uh, for five years. And my organization asked me if I could take a place in the executive committee mm -hmm. uh, to help that project forward. And another thing is that uh, you may know that 
the European Union is, is, is spending um, money to help other parts of the world to develop intellectual property systems. Mm -hmm. It's called IP Key. Um, the CPVO has an important role there to organize trainings, uh, etc., in, in areas in the world. The coordination of that, CPVO has asked me to do that. So for the areas China, Southeast Asia, and South America, mm -hmm. and in the future years, there are important programs to be uh, to be helped, and I can coordinate that. Mm -hmm. So working up, that's nice. Working up, that's good. We can still benefit from your expertise. <laughs> Um, case in uh, to switch gears a little bit, and we are seeing that a lot of policy debates, including those on uh, plant breeding on the seed sector, are being, I would say, derailed by certain uh, NGOs. Uh, what should we do about this? Yes, that is that is an, an aspect that uh, indeed, when you work in the sector, uh, you come across that. Uh, what what should we do about it? It is it's not an easy problem because we are not very well equipped to deal with it. Mm -hmm. uh, NGOs have a specific way for outreach to governments, for to parliaments, to the population, mm -hmm. um, and for a long time, the industry and also we and UPOP has tried to counter that with facts. Uh, only then you you that does not lead to a fruitful exchange of points of view because you speak two different languages. One is speaking, well, more or less with emotion, and the other one's with facts, and you will never reach each other. Mm. So we will have to do an effort to really uh, speak with each other. And that is that is not easy. That's one thing. And the other thing, I think for us, for UPO, for the industry, it is important to reach behind the NGOs, because the NGOs always claim to represent uh, groups of farmers, uh, certain aspects of the of society um, when you have the occasion to speak to actual people from that group of society mm -hmm. sometimes they have different opinions mm -hmm. so we should uh, do both we should stay in good contact with the ngos listen to them because mm -hmm. not everything they say is wrong um, and also if we can improve our systems we should do that but also we should go continue to try to reach beyond the NGOs mm -hmm. uh, and to speak with the people. Yeah, yeah. Um, we are here in, in, in Hangzhou attending the UPOF uh, meeting of their working group on biochemical molecular techniques, the so-called BMT. In your opinion, is there room for the use of um, molecular techniques in variety testing? Yeah, that's an interesting question because it brings me back in the beginning of my career when hybrids came on the market and there was the same question. Will that not be difficult for uh, variety testing, hybridization. I think we have the obligation as UPOP community to follow what is happening uh, in the industry and uh, in in the seed industry, especially in the vegetable industry with the agriculture industry, but also the ornamentals, more and more molecular techniques are used to improve a variety. They gain a lot of time uh, by using clever uh, uh, molecular techniques. Uh, so molecular assisted and molecular driven breeding now is more uh, practice than an exception. And I think our system should follow that. Uh, we should learn from each other because UPOF is based on the expression of the genetics in the field, mm -hmm. which is also appealing for farmers. They do not buy a package of genes. They, they buy a plant that will produce what they want. So this translation of all this genetic knowledge mm. Uh, into characteristics. I think companies are in a good position to do that. And um, what we see, for sometimes we thought, well, everything will be cheaper when we use molecular techniques. It is not the case because this use of molecular techniques is almost countered by an increasing use of phenotypic uh, te techniques, uh, image analysis, to more, to better observe uh, the phenotypic characteristics. And the combination of these two, I think, will have a great impact also on our work. Uh, we slowly begin now with this character-based uh, replacement of characteristics by molecular uh, traits, like disease resistances. And I'm sure if our knowledge improves, we can do more. And even we can maybe uh, capture characteristics that are now too complicated to observe, can be easier uh, observed when you replace them by a molecular technique. Excellent. I look forward 
to that uh, development. The future is bright, would I say in China. Thank you very much, Kate. You're welcome.